Hello everyone, welcome to another episode of TC Talk, back today with another video, and in today's video, it was supposed to be How to Katsu Episode 5, but that is getting pushed until tomorrow, because today we have the finally the reveal of two, maybe there's another one, but the two confirmed Dust Till Dawn heroes in New Prism Advent of Thrones, as well as Vincent, giving their hero abilities and kind of just fully revealing the heroes. They ended up revealing... Uh, the heroes at the, I think it was the, the calling this this weekend or the battle hard this weekend, one or the other, um, one of the two. But they finally revealed these two heroes, so we're going to talk about them and just give our whole thoughts. So if you're new to the channel, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. If you are a long stay member, thank you so much for your continued support. Feel free to check out the Patreon and the Discord down below. Also, if I'm a little bit foggy, I feel like absolute ass today. I'm really sick. So if I talk like, I don't know, like I'm out there, that's probably why. Uh, but we're going to get right into it. So, Prism, is she back, right? Like, that's been the biggest thing that people are wondering. Prism, lover or hater, is one of the more pol polarizing heroes in the game, if not, honestly, the most polarizing hero in the game from, like, a like or dislike standpoint and sheer, like, lore standpoint. So, Prism, Avon of Thrones, as you can see on the left, I can't zoom up crazy into both of them. I just took this from the video. They ended up revealing the video uh, to on their Twitter, so you can definitely go to the Fab TCG Twitter and check it out. But they go through like all of the different things, and it's basically just a promotion for the pre-release. Um, but Prism, Avon of Thrones says, whenever a card with Herald in its name is put into Prism Soul during an action phase, you may search your deck for a figment. Put it into their arena and then shuffle. Once per turn instant, pay two resources, banish a card from your soul, awaken target figment you control. So, <clears throat> one, before this, uh, she was revealed, everybody was a little bit like concerned from a competitive standpoint because she has 16 life at her young hero, which uh, we can assume, you know, if you take the same uh, life difference at CC, that means she would be around 32 life uh, in in CC, which is the second lowest ever behind Kano. So it was, we were like, wow, what is her ability that makes her this powerful? It's got to be pretty good. So whenever a card with Herald in its name is put in your soul, which for her is really easy, she has a lot of Herald cards, and she's probably going to have even more in this set. Um, during the action phase, you can search your deck for a Figment, put it into Arena and then Shuffle. I'm assuming Figment is similar to Invocations of Dromai with her Dragons. So... I'm assuming the heralds are going to, or the angels are, some of the angels are going to have some type of figment um, invocation or like figment proc that then turns them into, then you can pay for the once per turn instant to resource, banish a card from your soul, awaken the figment you control. So you're awakening that herald or that angel. That's my guess. There's going to be some type of card you awaken into its like actual like attacking state. Um, what also could be cool, maybe there will be a couple cards like this where, uh, there, you know, you have like the day and night cycles of magic where like during the day cycle, a uh, card is a certain thing. And then during the night cycle, it's a more powerful card. It could be that where the figment version, uh, is like a normal card. And then the awakened version is like a, a better version of that same card. That would be really cool. But regardless, uh, that's her ability. Nothing crazy. Um, the biggest discussion point right now is like, is there going to be a way for her to keep her angels alive really uh, consistently? Because her, her angels all have ward, which basically means if she's dealt any damage, all her angels will pop. She could have six angels on the board. And if she gets dealt damage, like she's kind of screwed. That's with the information we know right now. So it's going to be interesting to see what she can do. I think she's definitely going to be a control based hero. Just based off the way some of the interactions are already working with her. It definitely seems like she's going to be more of a slower base hero. Um, but you might be able to just play her straight heralds and then put out figments and, and put out like threats and tell your opponent, like either deal with those threats or deal with me type thing. So it'll be really interesting. Uh, definitely seems like a play with knowing nothing about her kit. It definitely seems like a playable thing because you basically her top te text with the new prism is basically prisms old text, but with a little bit more stipulations. Prism old text was, uh, to pay to go into or to get to go into soul right or to use her soul this one basically says if anything with herald and same which most heralds if they hit go into soul where a lot of them have some type of stipulation with that so it's not gonna be too hard for her to get stuff in soul especially if she's on an aggro game plan even um but the figments are gonna be cool i think the figments are gonna be similar to Dromai, uh where you 
where you uh, invoke them eventually or awaken them into their more playable state. And then we have Vincent. Vincent is at the start of your turn. Banish a card from your hand. If you do, create a rune chant token. Uh, whenever you play... So I got I'm, I got that part right. Um, I thought you'd have to pay a life, uh, but we're just banishing a card from our hand. If you do, create a rune chant token. Whenever you play a shadow non-attack action card... You may pay one life. If you do, the next rune chain effect that would deal damage this turn can't be prevented. So it's kind of like a thematic thing with Prism. I'm assuming Prism is going to have a lot of prevention effects. Uh, and Ben Set is going to have ways of basically saying you can't prevent these effects. So if he has arcane damage coming at Prism and Prism has a bunch of ward out or Prism has some type of like spectral shields and things like that, all Ben Set's got to do is pay a life and that rune chant can't be prevented. Also, it has an application in normal matchups where you pitch for Arcane uh, to prevent the damage. You won't be able to do that if she uh, uh, that if she uh, pays one life. So, really interesting ability. It's going to be the top line of text is what's really important. At the start of your turn, banish a card from your hand if you do create a rune chant. Basically, this is going to let you be able to run blood deck cards in your deck and not have to worry about like the the RNG of it, like Chain did. As powerful as Chain was, you would have times where you're on like four soul shackles and you just banish four cards from your deck and none of them are blood deck cards. And you basically just milled yourself for four for no reason. So that felt really bad. Uh, but in this in this uh, one, you know, you'll be able to kind of like pick and choose what you banish. Yes, it'll only be one card, but those cards might have added effects. And you'll still have cards, um, you know, that have blood debt but can be played normally, which will make it uh, be able to be a little bit more, I think, flexible maybe than Chain was. But we'll have to see. It's been really interesting. Uh, basically, it's start your turn, banish a card from your hand if you do create a rune chance. So, like, the card that has already been revealed, it's a three for seven, but it's uh, for free if you have three rune chants. You know, you, you banish that card, you already get a rune chant. Uh, we'll have to see where her kit is going to be. I think she might end up playing stuff like uh rune blood rune blood rune blade no rune blood incantation where you make one rune chant a turn i think that would be good uh for her i think read the runes will obviously be like usable blessing of occult even if she's like more of a control based hero might be usable um it's gonna be really interesting to see how she plays i think her i think her kid's gonna have a little bit more rune chant generation like she's not viscerai so she's not gonna be able to just play cards and create rune chants. So she's going to need cards that make rune chants. Um, attacks like, you know, uh, Spellblade Assault will be nice. Even Spellblade Strike, things like that. But also, uh, the, I'm assuming she's going to have some Shadow Runeblade cards that create rune chants in some way, shape, or form. Uh, she's going to have to. Otherwise, her, her abilities will be a little bit too inconsistent. Uh, and it's just from my opinion. So... Really interested to see that. Let me know what your thoughts are, though. I, I'm really interested to see, you know, how this set goes. And I'm assuming this isn't the only two heroes that obviously are going to be revealed. I th think we're going to get one more hero, personally. Um, it's going to be kind of a one we haven't seen before. But I don't think we're only going to have two heroes. I think we'll have one more. Um, but we'll have to, it remains to be seen. Super excited for the for the set next month. Um, haven't heard anything on spoiler season yet i don't know how they're doing it this set uh most people that i know that aren't like the people you're seeing on twitter like the random people and i don't mean random in a bad way it's been like random like reveals uh outside of those people that i know most of the content creators that are like in my circle haven't gotten anything on spoiler season yet so hopefully that comes in next week i would assume if it does come in uh but they might be doing it different for the supplemental set either way we're gonna have fun with it we'll react to the set nonetheless Hopefully we do get something though. Um, but yeah, let me know your thoughts on the hero. It's really really cool. Both both of them don't seem crazy. They both seem pretty pretty solid, pretty fair, pretty fun, uh, and I'm super excited for it. But yeah, if you like this type of content, please leave a like, comment, or subscribe. If not me, it's totally fine. Go to our Flesh and Blood creator, leave a like, comment, subscribe on their stuff so we can get more people seeing this game. Um, and you'll see how to Katsu episode five tomorrow. So be sure to check that out. And I'll see y'all next time on TC Talk. Thank y'all so much.